Hey, I'm Noel Powell from creationeffects.com and in this tutorial I'm going to build a new 3D landscape in Adobe After Effects similar to the landscape animations you're seeing right now. And I don't know what I'm going to make yet. I'm actually going to roll the dice and just choose a random landscape on the internet and then try to recreate it in 3D in After Effects. And I'll be using the landscaper template from Creation Effects. If you don't have the template, uh, you still might learn a lot from this tutorial. Or if you have the template, I think you'll probably learn some good tips that can help you when making your own landscapes. I have no idea how it's going to turn out, and usually I like to plan every little detail of my videos, so this should be interesting. But uh, let's get right to it. You can see I've got Landscaper open, but I'm going to go to Google, and I'll bring up the dice roller, and I'll add another dice. So I'm going to use these numbers to choose uh, an image in Google Images. So, um, so let's just roll the dice, see what we get. Four and three. All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to type in landscape photography. I learned if you type photography, you get prettier landscapes. Um, maybe I'll say beautiful. And I'll go to images. And what was it? I think it was four, three. So we'll do four rows down. One, two, three, four, third image. All right, that's it. That's actually really easy. I might have to do two landscapes. Um, I was kind of hoping for something a little more complex, but let's just see how this goes. I'll put this image on my desktop and I'll close Chrome. And actually, I think I'll open this up in Photoshop so we can easily switch back and forth. All right, our first step would be to find a uh, ground image and a sky image. And we're in luck because uh, we've got a ground image with a street on it. That's a lot like this, so we can use that. I'll go back to Landscaper. And I'm going to open up the Build Your Own Landscape folder. And there are several pre-comps in here where we can choose our ground image and a sky image. And if we're doing a night scene, we can choose some stars. Um, I'll open up the ground pre-comp. And there's, there's about 60 or 70 different images of grounds in here. Everything from fields of flowers to snow to sand, dirt, rocks. I actually know which one I want. It's this desert highway one. All right, and then I'll go to my sky pre-comp. And this picture actually looks a lot, very similar to the photo, so I'm just gonna leave that. There's a lot of other sky images in here you could choose if you wanted to. And it doesn't matter that the colors don't match right now because we can fix the lighting later. So I'll close that. And I'll close my ground pre-comp and I'll open up the Your Landscape comp here. And here's what we got. And this is a 3D scene. Uh, we could move our camera over the ground or move it up or down or sideways. I usually animate my camera at the end. Um, one thing I might do, you can see in our image, the ground is really grassy. And this is more dry desert. Um, we could change that. Maybe I'll do that real quick. I'll go to my ground pre-comp. And I'm going to look for an image and I'll probably fast forward this because just for the sake of time, you don't need to see me doing every little thing. All right, I think this one's pretty good. And what I'll do is I'll just combine the two images. So my highway image is showing, but I've got my, my grass ground selected and I'm just gonna draw a mask. And I'll unhide that and maybe feather it a bit. That works for me. I'll close that and you can see it updated here. Now we just need to add some mountains. So uh, usually you you would be adding 
all sorts of elements to your landscape, trees and bushes. Um, but I'm trying to stick with this look, so I won't do that. I'll just uh, add some mountains. It looks like we got some foothills in the foreground and then some bigger mountains behind them. So I'll look for both. Uh, you can find elements in the element library here. Just open up this comp. And there's about a thousand elements. Maybe about 900 or so of them are in this comp. And you can preview them to see what they look like. But uh, And you can search for them in the search field. They all are, are tagged with keywords. Um, I think this is probably the slower way to search for a, an element, so I'm going to choose a different way. Um, if I unhide the instructions, which is this top layer, there's this URL here, and I can copy that and go back to Chrome and paste that. And we've got the element library online, which has preview images of all the elements. So this is a huge page. It goes down forever. You can search using your browser search filter, and you've got the keywords here. Or you can, uh, if you go all the way to the top, you've got some some links to jump to the right category. I'm looking for hills and land, so we can scroll through these and try and find something that looks similar to our image. So these look kind of grassy. I think this one's pretty close. Grassy Mountains 3 is the name. I'll copy that and I'll go back to After Effects and I'll paste it into my search field. And you gotta make sure that no layers are selected or it won't work. So I usually select something and then deselect it. Okay, there it is. I just copy that layer and go back to my landscape comp and I'll paste it. This is a background layer, uh, so this goes underneath these blue water layers and we'll turn it on I'll bring up the scale and I'm gonna just make these a little shorter and now we need some jagged mountains for the for behind the foothills I'll go back to uh, my element library online and I'm gonna look for some jagged mountains these are all organized in order of similarity. Maybe these ones. Let's go with this. Snowy Mountains 17. I'll copy that. And in After Effects, deselect all the layers and I'll paste it in here. Okay, I copied it and I'm gonna paste it below my, my hills turn it on and we can scale it up you can see there's a lot of atmospheric haze all of that is automatic it, the intensity of the haze depends on its distance from the camera these elements are really far back if I hit the P key to bring up the position you can see 25,000 pixels back let's look at the mountains also 25, so we would actually want to change that to something closer. I'll do 17,000. Okay, 15,000. And hit the S key to bring up scale, and I'll scale it down. And we can also adjust the amount of haze on the control layer. So this is how we would uh, customize the overall look of the scene. And I'll select that and then in my effect controls panel we've got all these different customization controls. We can see we've got some haze controls here. Visibility is set to 25,000 pixels. That's good. That's the furthest element in our scene. And we'll just set that element to 45% haze. Maybe 50. And you can see the ground color here doesn't really match the background. And we can fix that too. That's in our ground controls. That's the blend color. So what we'll do is just hit the eyedropper and then sample this color here. So now the ground kind of fades into that color. Okay, let's fix the lighting and try and make it more like our, our photo. You can see this is at sunset it looks like. So we can, that can be the first thing we change. 
I'll go to control layer and I'll open the auto sky controls, turn on auto sky. And right now it's set to, to noon. You can see our clock. The hour hand is pointing straight up like 12 o'clock. Let's set this to something more like 7 p.m. Okay, so that brought our sun down. It changed the color of the entire scene. And the sun is showing right through our, our mountains. And we can fix that. We just have to open the sun controls and sun position. And you can see this horizon contact point control. That determines the point at which the sun dims as it's moving down in the sky. So you would make put that at wherever the sun makes contact with the land. Okay, if we look at our, this is getting closer, but if we look at our photo again, we've got brighter white sun here, kind of a higher contrast level than we got in here. So we can see if we can uh, fix that a little bit. If we go to our control layer and then go back to uh, auto sky, our auto sky controls, we're at sunset right now. So we can open up the sunset settings and in here we can adjust the brightness and the contrast, the tint amount. Um, we can probably lower that a little bit. And if you needed more control, you could always just use the, the color correction effects of your choice on the individual elements on the layers down here. Something I might think about is, is adding some effects to this. In our project panel, we've got a whole folder full of effects that you can add to enhance your scene. Um, I might add some fog, so I'll open that one up. There's different kinds of fog in here. I'll just open up, I'll just copy this fog effect simple layer and I'll paste that in between my mountain and my hills. And it's in front of my hills, so I can just hit the P key and move it back until it's behind my hills, about there. And I might move it down a little bit so we don't see it as much. And I might uh, actually, uh, I'm going to put some horizon fog in here as well. If I go back to my fog comp, there's this fog effect that's labeled horizon and it just adds a strip of fog right where the ground meets your background. I'll copy that too and I'll put it, I'll put this one above my water layers. And if I go to effect controls, there's all these controls here for my fog and uh, I can move it back a bit. And this fog will actually travel across the frame like it's blowing in the wind and you can adjust the speed and all that in here. Um, but I think that helps kind of blend the ground and the background elements together a little bit, make it look like everything belongs in the same scene. Okay, so I've let the comp uh, cache some frames and we can play it back and see what it looks like. This is just the default camera movement um, that the, is in here already. It's just position, two position keyframes on the camera layer. Uh, you, you could do other stuff to this. You could add some 3D title on under the street if you wanted to or you could add some trees or bushes uh, you know before I go let me just show you one cool thing because after I make a landscape I always like to see what it looks like at different times of day I'll go back to my auto sky controls uh, let's experiment with this that's kind of cool we can go darker you can see the stars are rotating and the fog is moving as I increase the clock. So now we're in early morning. You could animate a time lapse um, just by keyframing the clock. Uh, another cool feature is you can add water to your scene. I can just select this layer, the ground projection screen, and then I can use my pen tool to just draw a lake right on the ground layer. And what that actually does is it draws an island, but if you go down here and invert the mask, now you've got a lake. And you can see it's reflecting the background elements, like the mountains and the sky. 
So that was a, an easy one. Um, I might do another tutorial sometime on, and maybe get something a little more complex. But hopefully that gives you an idea of the kind of stuff you can do. It's a huge template and there's a lot of stuff that we never looked at. But everything's customizable. All right, that's enough. I can go on all day. If you want to uh, look at the, the main tutorial for Landscaper or watch the demo video and see lots of examples of, of landscapes that I made, um, just go to that link in the description. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial.